One in five. One in five suffer. Erase the stigmas. Brain difference is not a crime. Mental health isn't just your problem. It's our problem. And now, Mental Health Mondays with Marla and Dave. Welcome, Welcome to, to Mental, Mental Health, health Monday. We are Marla and Dave. Um, that we I, are. I am Marla. And I'm Dave. Okay. Well, then we've established <laughs> that. And I think that that's the way we start every show. And also reminding you that uh, Mental Health Monday is a program that is brought to you by both NAMI, San Fernando Valley, and LovingBeyondReason.org. And we want to uh, remind you guys about the Mental Health Monday's GoFundMe page because that is the way we are paying for the show now. We need your help, your support to continue to bring uh, these great guests, this great information, the entertainment value. You just might learn something when you stop by Mental Health Mondays. We'll you'll always have um, a good time. And like Dave said, you know, it's these are conversations that will never be um, not worth having. So you're, you're not alone here. Indeed. Uh, Dr. Ali is our guest today. It's uh, Allison, uh, Dr. Allison Hicks. Hicks, otherwise known as Dr. Ali. She's a mental health relationship expert, television personality, and founder of the, uh, is it the D-O-U-X Consulting Group? Do. Hello. Do. She holds a PhD in clinical psychology and uses her 10 plus years of knowledge in human behavior to help reconnect people to their true purpose, happiness, and creativity. She lectures at Cal State. Los Angeles. She has been featured on networks including OWN, VH1, MTV, and NBC. Frequently writes and is featured in articles for outlets including Black Love, The Knot, and Bon Appetit. She is featured on a mem- on a number of podcasts and now including this one, Mental Health Mondays. It's Dr. Ali, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Hey, can I talk now? <laughs> you yeah. will. You, you can you're talk. Gonna, you're going to you, get so many words in, it's going to be mind-boggling. And when we come back, we'll have a great conversation with Dr. Ali. Stay tuned. Help someone who is struggling by supporting the National Alliance on Mental Illness and be a part of the NAMI effect. Hope starts with you. Well, you've got your official welcome to Mental Health Monday. Um, we are very, very happy to have you here. And I just want to remind everybody, you know, Dr. Um, Dr. Allie, or Allison Hicks, as, as some may know her, um, she always has so much good information to share. This will as well um, be an episode one and episode two. Yes. So today we're live doing episode one um, with Dr. Allie. Welcome. Hey, hey, I love y'all. Thank you so much for having me here. Uh, is- thank you. It's our pleasure. Oh. Yes. So do you, do you wake, we're honored. do you wake up like this? What do you, is, do you like, is the zoom, you know, I'm just wondering if, because I've been trying to find my, my, um, my zoom face and I've yet to find it. I'm like, first I started like when I would do zoom interviews, like, Oh, let me get presentable. And then pretty soon I was just in, you know, a, a shirt and nothing else like, you know, Nothing presentable at all. Works for me. I am wearing some stretch pants. I am wearing stretch pants, literally. And this is just a shirt. I, I just found something with frill on it that gives you more of, a, of an elevation. Well, I'm not nice. asking you to reveal your secrets. Nice. I'm just trying to say, teach me the teach, teach me your ways is all I'm saying. I'm just trying to learn. That's what I'm here for. Um, so, so before we even get any further, I, I want to always start um, with kind of just getting to know Dr. Alley. So first off, I would say would be um, the conversation of your journey, your journey to this place of help and healing for others. So what started you off and where did you begin um, down the road of psychology? It's like, I don't want to start at the beginning, but the beginning is childhood, right? My, My mom is a psychologist and my father is a medical doctor. And so from the time I was like two years old, I wanted to be a brain surgeon, right? That was my goal. I wanted to cut people open and do all that stuff. And um, so I go to school and go to college and uh, my emphasis is, you know, biology and chemistry. And then I had a cadaver that was uh, at our university and everyone was really interested in what was going on with this cadaver. She was a male to female uh, transsexual and everyone was really interested in like the biology. But I noticed that I wasn't. And I was like really focused on her nail polish, right? (laughs) 
I was thinking like, <laughs> what was going on toward the end of her life that kept her from getting a manicure? Right. And I was like really interested in her story. And obviously you don't get stories attached to cadavers that come into your programs. Um, and so I like, after that lab, I, I changed my major to psychology and I never looked back. I went and I got my master's and my PhD and I started working in with uh, what's called high acuity patients. So these are patients that have like severe trauma, severe presentation, um, really severe uh, mental illness. And I worked at a lot of the like premier facilities around California. And I was working at one facility with sex trafficked adolescent girls in a mm. fully locked facility. And I, I just loved them all so much. Like I just, I loved being with them. I loved working with them. And as I was talking to them, you know, we were bonding and connecting and doing really good work, but they were all like, you know, you're great and all, but I'm going to have like 10,000 other therapists. And what I care about is becoming Kim Kardashian. So I was like, fair enough. She's gorgeous. I get it. But they all wanted to do sex tapes and, and things like that. No shame to sex tapes. I ain't got no problem with sex tapes. But I was helping them understand that it might not turn out the way they thought it would because of the, how their circumstances are so different. Right. And so I started leaning into the, the new belief that I needed to put myself in a position where I could help more patients or I could help more people. And so I started to pivot my career into working in media because this is where a lot of people get their ideas of like what works in hmm. life and what doesn't work. And so I was like, so if I can bring to this space, to this media space, some scientific knowledge on mental health, on wellness, on seeking and finding purpose, on just general human behavior, I think that's my purpose. So you identified the fact that this is where you could be of greater influence, that exactly. you're, you could bring your expertise to influence. Yeah, that kind of backfired a little bit on me um, when I was on Love & Hip Hop, but we'll deal with that on another time. <laughs> but so I... you. You're doing a, you're doing it, and you're actually penetrating that um, arena very well. I might add on a serious tip. So, I take my hat off because I mean I do a little bit of following. So I I I see that um, that was actually a a good good plan for you. Absolutely, I I do have one question though. If you're dealing with a young girl <laughs> who seems to have misplaced. Uh, goals and whose goal is to be Kim Kardashian. Of course, Kim Kardashian is the only Kim Kardashian. So to have that goal is a little strange. Um, uh, and then to say, uh, of course, I don't have any problem with sex tapes. How, how do you penetrate and change the direction of a young person, a young, a young woman who has that type of thinking and, and help them pivot to uh, the type of thinking that would be more productive for them? Absolutely. The first thing I do is I try to find a buy-in. I try to figure out what is the thing that this person wants more than anything and what is kind of beneath mm. that, right? Because a lot of people will be like, well, I want a sex tape because I want, you know, people to look at me and think that I'm beautiful and think this and think that. And then you go beneath it, right? So let's mm -hmm. say that's a person's answer. That might be because, if you, you know, through work and conversation, that might be because they want closeness and intimacy. Mm. They want so, to feel love. They want to feel connection. Yeah. And so there's other ways we can help you find that. Mm. It, must, it might not be the only route to that. And it actually might not be a really great route for you to get the things that you really want, which might be connection. And it might actually be connection with your family, with a particular person. And a lot of times people try to get things, but they don't often go about like the right way to get it, the way that will actually make sure they get that thing. Yeah, no, I really, I really appreciate that. It also disarms their defenses when you don't just start saying I disagree with you right off the bat. So that's that's a very good perspective. No judgment. Yeah, no yeah. judgment. Yeah. Well, I would I would assume that you know judgment in a scenario like that would be crushing and dis disengaging. I mean, if you start judging my personal, you know, issue. Yeah, and and, and and it takes a special person like Dr. Alley to be able to do that because I know over time, I might be able to do that once or twice, but over time, if I was doing that all day long, you'd be like, look, uh-uh. <laughs> so, so, we got to change something. Yeah, I, mo most definitely. That's, that's, a, that's a, I think that we'll get more into this as we go along, but um, one of the things that I would love for you to kind of address when we come back from this break um is whether or not it, does any part of your search to be in psychology have anything to do with your own personal traumas and and issues that you had as a young young lady growing up so hold that thought 
And when we come back, um, we can open up with that as a conversation. Huh? What do you think, Dr. <laughs> Allie? What? Huh? Our guest is Dr. Allison Hicks, otherwise known as Dr. Allie. We'll be right back. You may not realize it, but these words, often used to describe someone with a mental health condition, can be very harmful. In a country where one in five people are affected by a mental health condition, it's time for all of us to step up and change the conversation. Just because someone's struggle isn't obvious on the outside doesn't mean they aren't hurting on the inside. We need to see the person, not the condition. Join with me, pledge to be stigma free. When Dave and Marla get together, it's hot. It's time for the Mental Health Minute with Marla and Dave. Post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD is a real illness. You can get PTSD after living through or seeing a traumatic event such as war, a hurricane, uh, rape, physical abuse, or a bad accident. PTSD makes you feel stressed and afraid after the danger is over. It affects your life and the people around you. PTSD can cause problems like flashbacks or feeling like the event is happening over and over again. Trouble sleeping or nightmares, feeling alone, angry outburst, feeling worried, guilty, or sad. PTSD can happen to anyone, even children. Medicines can help you feel less afraid and tense. It might take a few weeks for them to work. Talking to a specially trained doctor or counselor also helps many people with PTSD. If you or anyone you know needs help dealing with any of these issues, please seek professional help. This message is brought to you by Mental Health Mondays with Marla and Dave. David is a thinker. I never do anything without thinking about it first. Marla is a feeler. I basically wear my personality on my scene. But when Marla and Dave get together, it's like a match dancing with a firecracker. It's amazing that we've been matches and firecrackers dancing for so long and no one has ever really exploded. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's an we'll observation. Have teach, we'll have to teach that dance one day. <laughs> that's an observation indeed. Um, anyway, so back to, back to Dr. Alley. Before we went to the last break, I was asking you, um, do, is there anything personal for you that led you to um, the field of psychology? Absolutely. I think we all have our own challenges. Like even in that last commercial, you were talking about, you know, PTSD and trauma and how there's trauma with a big T, which are things like you talked about. And then there's trauma with a small T. Trauma with a small T are things like divorce, um, you know, feeling isolated, alone, abandoned, things like that. And for me, I grew up in the wonderful county of Orange, Orange <laughs> County here in Southern California. And it's, I will say, I think I had a very blessed and wonderful upbringing, but some of my challenges were, I was surrounded by people that did not look like me. And mm. it was not at a time in history where it was um, looked down upon to say negative things about the way people looked, right? Mm. And so I grew up feeling very unattractive. You know, this light on me is a little bright, and so I think it might be making me look a little bit more light skinned than I really am. Right. <laughs> I'm a proud brown skinned girl. <laughs> I'm like middle. I'm like almond color, right? Almond or cinnamon, right? Is that um, a question? No. <laughs> okay. 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 It's rhetorical. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> and so I will say my biggest challenge growing up that probably led me to want to support specifically other young girls was I just felt horrible about the way I looked. I mm. felt horrible about, you know, every piece of myself and i remember one day i was just looking at my stomach and just crying my eyes out really i'm so ugly nobody's ever gonna love me um you know and i also marla knows i have a stunningly beautiful mother and she's fair skin and you know my little sister's fair skin with green eyes and i didn't get any of that and at the time that was very hard for me right and, and so this was like mostly like junior high, kind of going into high school, but I took a trip to Europe, which really rectified a lot of it. I really started to feel myself after I traveled more internationally. Um, but I had very low self-esteem. And as a result, when you have low self-esteem, sometimes you'll allow boys. And at the time it was boys, because I was a, a child. <laughs> you'll allow, you know, um, males to maybe not treat you in the way that is the mm -hmm. best possible way they can, mm -hmm. which compounds 
on self-esteem issues. And so I would say my primary issue was just not feeling to be in love with myself. And so right. not expecting better from people who said they loved me. And would you say you were dealing with a, a, a depression type of situation there that you were constantly feeling bad about yourself? It sounds like more of just an, a, a literal an identity. And when I was, let me say this. I would probably venture off the beaten path to say, and I know that I have my almost exact same experience of the same, that most young girls between the transition of preteen to teen have that doubt of acceptance. And, and I say it all the time out loud. I tell people, you know, what you think people, the, one of the main questions I think I've been asked more than anything else by everybody is, how are you so confident? And I'm like, listen, don't get beside yourself. This is, this was a journey found because there was a time that I too, and I, I distinctly remember being 13 and going, man, I, I thought I could try to try to, I, I looked at everyone else as being desirable or attractive and, and, and then tried to judge what I wasn't like, oh, they wear makeup and I don't. And oh, I look frumpy because of my religious, you know, expectations. And maybe if I wore shorter, shorter skirts and, and then I just remember, you know, as God blessed me literally in a two week span, trying to like wake up every morning and put on makeup and then hating myself even more and going, you know what? I'm done with Maybelline. I'm over it. And I felt like at that moment, there was a freedom that mm. just made me feel like that if I can just, if now, if I encounter somebody that, that likes me, I, I developed a better confidence that you really just like me. Like mm. I, there was nothing I was presenting. That's it. That's it. I so agree. And I, I developed along with that, like I diversified my self-esteem, right? My self-esteem wasn't just in my appearance, right? It became in my education. It was in, you know, the type of friend that I was, it was in the type of partner that I was, the type of child that I was, the way I like to learn my artistic ability, my athletic ability. Like I, I really tried to expand out beyond just judging myself based on how I looked and then how I looked at people who had their own issues with my race right although you're pretty for a black girl I couldn't bring an n-word home you know who you are mm. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> call them out which is so sad because Allison is so she's beautiful exactly. that's what's it's, funny it's that, baffling but but I want to I'm glad she's bringing that up because yeah yeah it's 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 not up to an external measurement of what others see it's always how you see Absolutely. yourself and so i'm again applaud you for bringing that perspective to young women um especially damaged and traumatized young women at a time that they need to find something different to change their internal gears Yes. Absolutely. Now, one of the things that has become a pretty popular kind of thing to say nowadays, a kind of a phrase, and it's the, the thing to do is to get a is to get a, a mental health coach. Explain to us what's the difference between uh, a, a doctor of psychology and just being a coach. I, <laughs> I don't think I fully understand the difference. Is it is it is it at the is it the degree? Is it is it education? Is the process? There's a lot. So um, there's higher a hierarchy, unfortunately. I'm not a fan of hierarchy, but at the top of the mental health game, you have medical doctors, mm -hmm. psychiatrists. Mm -hmm. um, so they have a medical degree and they're allowed to prescribe in all states in the United States, right? They can prescribe medications in every state. Yes. Then yes. below that, you have the different levels of psychologists. So there's different types of psychologists. Mm -hmm. You have, you know, tr psychologists that work with traumatic brain injury, that work with health, that work with seniors, that work with adolescents and children. So you have a lot of different specialties of psychologists. And within the title of psychologist, there's a few different degrees that people can get. So psychologist is normally reserved for people with doctorates. So if you have a PhD in clinical psychology or counseling psychology or psychology, um, or a PsyD. So a PsyD is a doctorate of of um just of psychology whereas a phd is a doctor in the philosophy of psychology mm -hmm. so phd is a little older of a degree but it also allows you to do research and what the society does is it really focuses you primarily in on clinical work so that's kind of how it's broken down and then there's like other doctorates that people have but i don't know if they can classically be called psychologists there's like eddds so it's doctorates of education of psychology there's a lot of different types of degrees then you have like therapists which you can also call a psychologist a therapist mm -hmm. but 
a lot of the time therapists and counselors refer to master's level clinicians who have a master's degree and do not have a, a doctorate. And that's MFT, um, masters of social work, MSW, there's a licensed clinical social workers, there's so many different master's level therapists. And then there's coaches. And coaches can be anyone from the lady that lives next door to somebody with an MD. So there's no so there's no license requirement to a coach. There's no license requirement, but most coaches do tend to get certified. So there are certification programs that people can go through. I'm a certified coach, um, a specifically relationship coach, but I do. But you're also coach. a psychologist. I'm also I also have a PhD in clinical right. psychology. Right, yeah, exactly. So there's there's she that. does it all, ladies and gentlemen. So there's that. So yeah, <laughs> so she can put the paper down, or she can have the paper in her hand. And we yeah. will be back with the I'm Every Woman, Dr. Alley, after this short break. All right, the fun music, Marla, means? Means it's time for me to do my dance. And that it's is the poll, poll time. question time. <laughs> Last week we asked you, uh, what is the number of U.S. adults suffering with schizophrenia? Your options were A, 500,000, B, 1.5 million, or 3 million for uh, a letter C. Uh, Dr. Ali, what do you think uh, the answer would be? We'll ask it again. What number of you not? What number of U.S. adults do you feel are suffering with schizophrenia? Half a million, thousand? one point five million, or three million? Oh my God! Why are you guys asking me this? I would say Be a million. Because we want your we want your answer. So it's one point five. It which is was B answered, one point five that million. Is that is true. And that's <laughs> that's why that is why you have the paper and you can put it down. You see, it's just the information's in you. The poll question for next week is Marla. Next week, the poll question is, what percentage of all global diseases are either mental, neurological, or substance abuse disorders? I'd out like to repeat it again. Out of all diseases. Out of all the diseases that mental maladies, a percentage of all global diseases are either their mental, neurological, or substance abuse disorders. And what percentage would that be? Your, Your choices options are? A, 3%, B, 7%, or C, 10%. Take a stab, Dr. Alley. Oh my God. Um, I would say what were the what were the percentages again? Three percent, seven percent, or ten percent? Ten percent. Okay, well, we, we, we will we, find we'll out we next know. week. <laughs> wait, wait to leave you hanging. So you guys <laughs> and as usual, you guys, please stop by the Mental Health Mondays GoFundMe page and support us. We shall return. And vote. poll question all right he uh, said vote on what <laughs> did we not just give you a new poll question that's i was true. thinking the poll question that's, that's what i was true. thinking all right um so uh you were telling us about uh the difference of the coaching and she, versus... she, you broke down the uh levels from psychiatrist all the way down to coaching and um that kind of leads me into uh, sort of some of the work that you do on television and, and, and different networks. How how do you how how effective do you think when you go on a show like uh, any show that you've been on, um, when you're dealing with maybe a matter of just a few minutes and someone comes up and gives you a problem? How effective is is that in sort of helping that person? Is that just the first step, uh, directing them toward the actual help that they need? Yeah, I definitely think it's a first step because, you know, when you're on TV, you're still on TV, right? Yeah. We've all been on shows and we understand there's still like, you know, no matter how unscripted things are. <laughs> still yeah, so got to do what you got to do. And you still have to do what you have to do. And so you only have a limited amount of time. And my focus on shows is not to break people down. Hmm. Because I always say, I'm not going to break someone if I can't fix them. Hmm. Right? So if I don't have six months with you, if I don't have 10 months with you, I'm not breaking anyone down on a, ne on a network show. What I do is I try to educate. I try to psychoeducate. I try to bring forth information that can help anybody watching as well as hopefully give the person that I'm talking to some tool to take away from our interaction. Because I really believe that when you begin to grow tools and add them to your tool belt, a lot of the negative um, issues that we've been dealing with, the negative symptoms that we've had, start to kind of decrease when you find a better way to process particular things. And so I'm really, it's called being very like skills focused 
and mm -hmm. um, focused on adding to a patient's life, a client's life. And so I really focus on doing that when I'm on different shows to make sure that everyone's taking something away. Yeah, that's awesome. It's interesting that you said you don't want to break somebody down if you can't, can't fix, fix them. them. Don't have yeah, the time to fix them. Uh, which then leads me to another question. Describe that process of breaking somebody down. And, and how do you keep the patient uh, along for the ride as they continue to be broken down? Because that sounds extremely destab destabilizing. It was crazy. I really don't even break people down even in my private sessions. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I tend to be really gentle. Um, because I feel like you can be aggressive and some people might need that and I'm not the therapist for them, right? Mm. I'm not the coach for them. If you need someone to be like, and you're messed up in this way, mm. I'm not gonna do that. But what I what, what happens is I guess the breakdown process, we may talk about something really difficult. Mm. Right. We may talk about something that's that you're really vulnerable about. And for a lot of people, they've never talked to anyone else about this. So that's like as kind of as aggressive as my breakdown process gets. Exposure that, to, to oneself. Yeah. Now you're being confronted with a conversation about this really difficult experience that you have. And I compare it to like 1970s monster movies. Yeah. Right. You watch the crawling eye or whatever it, and this monster is always in the periphery, right? It's yeah. always sneaking up. It's always a shadow. It's always a blur. And that's what we do with our trauma. But when I, when I like to work with people, I like to help them actually realize that the monster isn't that scary. When you actually see the eye in those movies and the monster, they're just a dude in a suit. You see the wires, you see the zipper, you see all the stuff that holds it together. It wasn't nearly as scary as you thought it was. Modern movies, entirely different. Terrifying. <laughs> 70s movies, entirely different. But, and, and so that's part of my quote unquote, like if, if there were, you know, the term breakdown, that would be what it is. It's just about really looking at these things squarely in the eye, but having that support and that structure of what do I do when I think about this thing and now I'm overwhelmed with sad emotions. Now I feel like I'm gonna cry until the end of the world and I'm never gonna stop crying. And I feel like I'm so low that I may never get out of bed. Mm. So now we have these skills put in place that we've already kind of worked on in practice before we really had to look at this thing. So let me try one of these things out. Let me see if it works. Okay, right. oh, this is good. You know, and just kind of baby step, moving one step at a time. Mm. So every So every program that you outline is very much you, you're, it sounds like your information is also um, married to the, the unique individual and how they process. Is that accurate? Absolutely. And um, I was trained in Gestalt psychology. And in Gestalt, they talk about the phenomenological space, the interaction that you have with the person, like the conversation you and I, the three of us are having right now, will never be replicated ever again in history. Mm. Even if the three of us get together again, we're never going to have the same conversation. This is a unique. It, it can, we could if we just play this Find play this tape back. We could do it. No, I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> we could just rewind and then we could have this could, the same conversation with her. It would be it would be Dr. Allie Marlin Dave Mental Health Monday Groundhog's Day. We could make that happen. <laughs> no, yes, I totally understand. I, Absolutely, I, I get that fully. So listen, we're going to. Um, we're going to come back. I want to, I want you to give, um, people, we're going to give, we want, we want a little bit of your best advice, but we're going to do another episode, um, with you. And in that we're going to lead into, um, you walking us through where we are now, specifically based on what COVID and some things that you see and understand and giving us some tools. Absolutely. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back as we conclude episode one with Dr. Allie. Bad. Worthless. Don't, don't trust them. They'll hurt you. You're worthless. It's pointless. When the pain of schizophrenia meets hope, everything can change. Help someone who is struggling by supporting the National Alliance on Mental Illness and be a part of the NAMI effect. Hope starts with you. All right, Dr. Allie, we're back. Um, we're, we're coming to the end of um, our episode one. And so I would love for you to just give us one go-to uh, statement or process that will just help us to get on the path of mental wellness. I think the way that we think about these trying times, it's not that what's happening isn't happening. This is insanely difficult, wildly difficult, overwhelming, all of those things. 
but holding in your mind at the same time that there still is an aspect of optimism, there still is a future. With um, depression, for example, it's a combination of feeling helpless, that we have no control over the things that are happening to us, and feeling hopeless, that there's never gonna be a change. And what I wanna help everyone understand is the only thing inevitable in our time and reality in the world is change. Absolutely. It's awesome. Change. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate that, and we're asked that you, you know, get comfortable, don't move, and we're going to finish episode one, and we'll be looking forward to you guys continuing our conversation and getting some tools with Dr. Alley in episode two. Absolutely. We want to remind you guys to stop by the Mental Health Mondays GoFundMe page and have a great week. We will see you next time with our continued discussion with, with Dr. Dr. Alley. Alley, 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 oh, 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 oh. You would think my love is really something.